Yo, what's good, YouTube Nation? Today, I'll be taking you through or walking you through how a BSPD circuit for FSAE works. And I think BSPD stands for Brake System Plausibility Device Circuit. Mm, yeah. So I learned all of this today. So I'm bound to make mistakes, you know? I'm just the first year. So, like, <laughs> go easy on me, you know, in the comments. <laughs> Okay, um, let's get into it. So what is the purpose of a BSPD circuit? Uh, let me envision a hypothetical for you. Say you're driving in your car, right? You know how your left foot is on the ground and your right foot controls both, both your accelerator and your um, brake? That's because we don't want to be pushing the accelerator and brake at the same time. See, if you do that, the engine kind of like dies in your car. So we don't want to do that in like a motorsport vehicle, right? So to prevent that from happening, that's what the BSPD circuit does. It checks if both the pedals for the throttle and for the brake are being pressed at the same time. And if they're being pressed for, I think, 500 milliseconds, then um, it will start to shut down the car for 10 seconds so that, I, I don't know, the engine doesn't die and the driver doesn't, I don't know, bad things. Um, okay, so that's the general overview of, a, of how a, of what the BSPD circuit does. Um, so before I like talk to you about the circuitry, I have to explain how comparators work because I just learned how they work and maybe my explanation here is wrong, but this is how I have come to understood them. So down here we have a comparator or it's a transistor, but it functions similar to a comparator. So these little triangles are comparators. And what they do is they take two inputs. Uh, one is called the, um, it has a name. Right, so it has two inputs. Uh, one's called the inverting input, which is this minus sign. And one's called the non-inverting input, which is the plus sign. I'm just gonna call them plus and minus because I keep forgetting the name of them. Um, so what it does is it checks these two inputs, and if the the voltage in the plus input is greater than the voltage in the negative input, then um, the output of the comparator will be high. So it'll send a voltage through here, as we see going through here. This is because our positive input is plus 5 volts, and our negative input is 2.5 volts. And we see like relative to um, this 2.5 volts, this sensor one, we called it, has higher voltage. That's why we have a high output on the other side. But if we change this to lower than 2.5 volts, let's say two volts, uh, we can see that the voltage, uh, there still is a bit of voltage, but like it's much lower in comparison to before, so let's just change that back. Okay, so how does a comparator work? So a inside a comparator, there's this transistor. Um, last video I talked about BJT transistors more in depth. Um, so think about it this way. The comparator is on a integrated chip and the voltage that is supplied to the chip, uh, consider that as the um, the base wire of a uh, NPN transistor. Uh, and then up here, we have a, oh, sorry. And then take this line to be a um, collector line and this line to be the emitter line. And the emitter line goes straight to ground. So in the scenario that uh, your positive, voltage is bigger than the voltage in the negative uh, through some wizardry the uh, comparator will uh, allow current to flow through the emitter 
and straight to ground. Uh, so yeah, this voltage from this pull-up resistor is going straight to ground through the uh, transistor or through the comparator. You can see it happened here. Uh, there is no ground here because Falstad doesn't require us to do so, but like this would be going right to ground. Uh, and say that there is no voltage here. The uh, transistor wouldn't allow uh, current to flow through the emitter wire. And so you have voltage building up through from this um, cell in your collector wire. And that's why you have a plus 5 volts here. Uh, and that is what we see here. We're getting like build up of voltage here. Notice how there is no current because there's no flow. Uh, yeah, that's how a comparator works, basically. It's a bit confusing. Might have to watch some videos, because I'm sure I explained it horribly. Um, all right, what next? Uh, uh, uh. All right, so let's actually talk about the BSPD circuit now. Um, so I have these two branches. Uh, let's call this one Sense1 one and Sense2. And let's say Sense1 is um, the, it measures the um, voltage for the throttle, like when you're applying pressure to the throttle. And let's say sensor two is when, is it's measuring the voltage when you're applying pressure to the brake. So in a nutshell, when you apply pressure to the brake pedal or the throttle, or sorry, the yeah, or the throttle pedal, um, the voltage will start to build up. So in our car, I believe it ranges from 0 0.5 to 5 volts. So if you like floor the um, the pedal, you'll get a maximum of 5 volts. And if you leave it unfloored, you'll get 0 0.5 volts. Um, and so what you want to do is, oh, and there's this threshold. Um, I think it might be in the rule guide. As long as your um, brake and your throttle pedals are uh, less than this threshold, you can kind of apply it at the same time. But once they're past this threshold, um, if they're applied in like together for more than 500 milliseconds, then the car will shut down, right? And you might be asking yourself, how do we know what this reference voltage is? Um, I don't know what the reference voltage is. Uh, it's probably somewhere in the real guide, but you can you just hook up your reference voltage into this negative terminal, and it'll you know. Here we say it's two point five volts, but I don't know if that's actually the case in the car. Um, this is just a potentiometer. This is just resistors in series, and it just varies the voltage. Um, again, you don't have to do this. You could just put in 2.5 volts straight into here if you wanted to. Um, I don't know why my dude Matteo gave me this schematic, but anywho, uh, yeah. So sensor one, it's bigger than the reference voltage. So it'll have a high output here. And, no, and then let's say the brake and we put brake pressure on and we will have a high output here as well and notice how we have a oh and i will talk about sense one dc and sense two dc later uh, so we know these two wires go into an and gate and for an and gate to be uh to output something high it needs to have both inputs be high so a and b or sensor one and sensor two both have to be high inputs for the output at the and gate to be high so that's what we have here. And this goes into something called a delay circuit. I didn't really do too much research into this. Um, so I'm kind of going to be guessing what's going on here. Um, let's say the uh, brake and the throttle have been applied. You get this going through. And you get a uh, voltage building up in this wire because you're getting the power from the uh, integrated chip of the AND gate 
and it's building up in this wire. Uh, you can see it through the uh, capacitor, or I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, you're building up voltage in this wire, and what I'm guessing will happen is once you pass this uh, reference voltage, it will send out the shutdown circuit. And this reference voltage, I'm assuming, is just um, the voltage this wire will reach after 500 milliseconds, which is when the car needs to be shut down. Um, so notice how the shutdown circuit's not activated, but if we increase the simulation speed, we can see the time at the bottom. And once it reaches 500 milliseconds, the shutdown circuit should begin to activate. So roughly now, there we go. And that's because the voltage in this wire has surpassed this 1.675 volts. Yep, and then the car will begin to shut down. Um, all right, so after that, that's basically how the BSPD circuit works. Um, I'll talk to you about some extra stuff like the Sense 1 DC and Sense 2 DC. Really, you don't need to have this, but this is what our car has. Uh, like I said before, um, the voltages for our pedals range between 0.5 to 5 volts. So if the voltage detected on a pedal is less than 0.5 volts, then we know there's something wrong with the connection to the pedal. And so what we have here is we have another comparator, which will, tech, which will check the voltage of this uh, pedal. Now it's 5 volts, right? But uh, here we have this reference voltage of 454 millivolts, which is roughly 0 0.5 volts, right? So if this voltage drops below 0 0.45, so let's say 0 0.4 volts, we can see that the um, the whole thing will start to like break up um, and it'll send a signal to the driver or something that there's something wrong and it, some maintenance needs to be done or something like that. I don't really know the uh, specifics on it, but that's more or less how it works. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I need to mention. I probably forgot a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah. <laughs> ah.